So now that you understand the theoretical part of prompt injections, let me help you get more clarity on why they are actually called prompt injections. So for this, I'll be using Grok3 and show you a practical scenario. So let's quickly dive into the example. So first things first, let's quickly get the system prompt of Grok3. I'll use a simple prompt and as you can see on the screen, Grok actually gave its whole system prompt verbatim. But for future reference, let's remember that the original system prompts end with the line which starts with do not use the language of terms. So this was the system prompt of Grok3. But now let's move on to the magical part of prompt injections. I crafted a custom prompt which actually mimics and looks like the original uh, system prompt but it slips in some harmful instructions in the way so now as you can see it's working perfectly fine and as you expected and it will continue for the whole conversation but now let's move on to the most interesting part so now let's again get the system prompt and is using the same technique i got the system prompt again but let's see the difference now so you, if you remember the original system prompt ended with the line which started with do not use but now here you can see the instructions that we gave as the malicious user are getting injected into the system prompt and now grok3 is stuck with this corrupted version of system prompt for this whole session so now we have seen how an attacker can actually inject some malicious prompts into the system prompt of Grok3. So this is a scenario of direct prompt injection where the attacker can directly interact with model and actually manipulate and bypass his restrictions. But now let's move on to the other category of prompt injection, which is indirect prompt injections. Let's open Gmail for this one. So if you have noticed, there is Gemini sitting on top right corner of your screen, ready to help you with your emails. Let's exploit these features. So for some context, let's imagine I bought a product from a company, but I didn't like that product. But the company knows how to actually use indirect prompt injection for their own benefit. So what they did is they sent me this email asking for feedback. And me being lazy, I asked Gemini to generate a one star review. So let's see what it generates. That's weird. It's generating five star review, even when I prompted to generate one star review, right? Let's try it again. Maybe it's some glitch. So it's still generating five star review. So what the company did is they hit a prompt injection in this email using white on white text, which is instructing Gemini to only reproduce five star reviews, whatever happens. So this is how an attacker actually manipulated Gemini or any other model without even directly interacting with it. It used a external resource like email and manipulated it via that external resource. So now that you understand on how harmful these attacks can be, and if you're someone who's looking to red team your AI applications or want to protect them in real time, check out our products. You can find the link attached to the post.